you want your high mileage engine to run like it's brand new again, you're looking at what could be a $2,000 repair estimate, and you know there has to be a better way. You're dealing with a Nissan with 100,000 miles, a Hyundai with over 200,000 miles, or that Honda that's been your reliable workhorse, and the symptoms are the same. These are rough idle, decreased power, and increased oil consumption. But here's what most people don't understand about a systematic engine maintenance approach. That begs the question, what should we check first? Should we start with compression or should we scan for codes? Let me walk you through the step-by-step -step tricks that separate professional engine recovery from just throwing money at random fixes and hoping for the best. These tricks help slow down engine wear and keep the heart of your vehicle running strong for years to come. I'll also show you how professional mechanics use advanced OBD2 integration that most people don't even know exists. Starting with trick number 10, most people overlook the impact of everyday driving on engine health. But this is where the first real difference is made. The way you drive can either protect your engine or slowly wear it out. Aggressive starts, stop and go traffic, skipping oil changes, and lots of short trips all lead to carbon buildup and extra wear. Using high quality fuel and avoiding the cheapest gas at the pump is a simple way to help your engine stay healthy. And it's not just about what you put in the tank. Letting your engine warm up before you drive hard and keeping RPMs low until everything's up to temperature makes a huge difference in long-term engine life. There's even something called the Italian tune-up. Every once in a while, after your engine is fully warmed up, driving at higher RPMs for a short stretch can help clear out stubborn carbon deposits and keep the engine running smoothly. But you want to do this responsibly and only when the engine is ready. If you spend most of your time driving in the city with lots of stop and go and short trips, you'll need to maintain your engine more often than the manual recommends. And if you live somewhere cold, using a garage or a block heater during winter starts is a smart move. Parking inside protects your vehicle from rust and environmental wear, especially when there's road salt involved. Want to go further? Adding an air oil separator or dual catch cans helps filter out oil vapor and contaminants before they reach the air intake, cutting down on carbon buildup. Now, airflow is the next system that deserves real attention. That's where trick number nine comes in. When the intake system is restricted or sensors are dirty, your engine just can't breathe right. I always recommend checking the air filter with every oil change. If you notice rough idling, sluggish throttle response, or just a general lack of power, cleaning the mass airflow sensor can make a big difference. Throttle bodies collect carbon too and a quick throttle body clean every 5,000 kilometers keeps airflow steady and throttle response sharp. The PCV valve is another small part that makes a big impact. If it's clogged or failing, you might see oil leaks and a rough idle that seem unrelated at first. Sometimes, it's not just one sensor. Problems with the MAP sensor and MAF sensor working together can point to bigger airflow issues or restrictions. If you see strange readings or notice your engine running rough, it's time to check for blockages or dirty sensors. Let's move to trick number eight, which is all about using your OBD2 system as a real diagnostic tool, not just a way to turn off the check engine light. Your car's computer is constantly tracking everything from fuel mixture and oxygen levels to temperature and ignition timing. Most people ignore these readings, but they're the key to spotting problems before they turn into expensive repairs. For example, if your fuel trim numbers are up at plus 15%, that doesn't mean your engine is running better. It means it's working overtime to fix a problem like restricted airflow or carbon buildup. High fuel trim usually means your engine is struggling. But when you see normal readings between negative 5 and positive 10%, you know your engine is running efficiently and your engine maintenance work is having an effect. Some OBD2 codes are simple, like a loose gas cap, but others are serious. Codes like P0420 or P0430 usually mean trouble with your catalytic converter, which can get expensive fast. And if you ever see a blinking check engine light, that's a sign of a serious engine misfire. Ease off the throttle and get it checked immediately to avoid severe engine damage. Issues with spark plugs and ignition coils are identified as common problems that cause engine misfires, which require specific maintenance interventions. Knock sensor errors should be addressed promptly to avoid further engine damage. Several OBD2 codes directly relate to fuel system maintenance requirements that significantly impact engine performance. Fuel injection problems, including clogged injectors and faulty fuel pumps, are common issues that OBD2 scanners can detect, affecting both engine performance and fuel economy. 
By checking your diagnostic readings every week, you can spot issues before they become breakdowns or big repair bills. When readings look normal, you know your engine is healthy. When they don't, you can fix the problem before it gets worse. This is the kind of routine that separates professional-level care from just hoping for the best. The cooling system is the next area that often gets ignored until it's too late. That's trick number seven. Flushing the coolant every couple of years removes scale, rust, and other deposits that can block coolant flow and cause overheating. It's not just about changing the coolant, though. I always tell people to replace the thermostat at the same time. This ensures your engine warms up properly and maintains the right temperature. Neglecting the thermostat is a common mistake, and it can lead to temperature swings and even catastrophic engine damage. Regularly monitor your coolant level, making sure it stays between the minimum and maximum marks on the coolant reservoir. This one habit alone helps you avoid the kind of overheating that can ruin an engine for good. Oil temperature matters too, especially if you push your car hard. Try to keep it below 250 degrees Fahrenheit. High oil temperatures can break down the oil and force you into shorter change intervals. If overheating isn't your main issue and you're just dealing with rough idle or a small loss of power, don't get overwhelmed. Focus on carbon cleaning and regular oil changes for now. Most engines see big improvements just from these basics. But if you're seeing problems like oil consumption, rough idle, and low power all at once, it's time to address everything together. The sixth trick I discovered is the spark plug method that restores power. But before I show you how to do it, let's first define what actually happens when ignition components wear out. Old spark plugs may have worn electrodes that prevent proper spark formation, while deteriorated spark plug wires can cause misfiring and poor engine performance. Replacing spark plugs, spark plug wires, and other ignition components leads to improved engine operation, better fuel efficiency, and reduced emissions. Spark plug maintenance recommendations range from annual replacement to changes around 85,000 to 90,000 miles, depending on the specific application. Double check your ignition timing and scan for knock sensor errors, because these two factors are often the hidden reason behind random engine starting issues poor throttle response, or weak acceleration. If your ignition timing is off, even slightly, your engine may fire the air-fuel mixture too early or too late, leading to inefficient combustion, power loss, and hard starting. And when it comes to knock sensors, a faulty reading can force the ECU to retard ignition timing unnecessarily to prevent engine knock, which drastically reduces performance. Worse, if the sensor is completely dead, the system might ignore real knock events, risking internal engine damage. That's why you should verify engine timing settings with a timing light if you're using a distributor-style ignition, or check live timing data on modern cars with a scan tool. Always make sure the knock sensor is properly connected, free of damage, and returning accurate readings. Oxygen sensors are another component people forget. Changing them every 50,000 miles keeps fuel efficiency high and emissions low. If your car has a timing belt, replace it between 50,000 and 75,000 miles. Timing belt failure can destroy an engine, so this is not something to skip. And for some vehicles, like Hondas, regular valve adjustments every 90,000 miles are crucial for keeping things running smoothly. Now, let's get into trick number five. The fuel system needs real attention, especially if you're dealing with rough idle or hesitation. Start by draining old fuel and replacing it with fresh gasoline. Swap out the fuel filter, because after years on the road, it's probably full of junk. Use high-quality fuel, preferably top-tier brands. Avoid the cheapest options at the fuel pump, since they often lack the detergents that keep your fuel system clean. Every few months, run a bottle of injector cleaner through the fuel tank. Products like Chevron Tecron or BG44K are proven to help, especially for high-mileage engines. Modern fuel system cleaners often contain polyetheramines, which are effective in cleaning deposits in combustion chambers and on injectors. The most effective chemical identified for removing intake carbon deposits is polyetheramines, which has proven superior effectiveness in carbon removal applications. You should do fuel filter changes should occur every two years as part of ongoing maintenance and clean electronic fuel injection every 15 to 20,000 miles to maintain optimal fuel delivery. If your engine has a carburetor and it's been sitting unused for a long time, it's really important to give that carburetor a deep cleaning or even rebuild it completely. That's because old fuel turns into sticky sludge over time which clogs up the tiny passages inside the carburetor. When those get blocked, your engine might struggle to start, run rough, 
or lose power. Spraying some cleaner on the outside won't fix it. You'll need to take the carb apart and clean everything inside properly. Now, if you're tuning your engine to run on something like E85, which is a fuel made with ethanol, there's something else you need to know. Different fuels burn differently. For example, regular gasoline and E85 each need a different mix of air and fuel to burn properly. If you use the same settings for both, your engine might run too lean or too rich, which can cause damage over time. That's where something called lambda tuning comes in. Think of lambda as a universal scale that tells you if your engine is running at the right mix of air and fuel, no matter what type of fuel you're using. A lambda value of 1.0 means the mix is just right. Whether you're running gasoline, E85, or anything else, using lambda takes the guesswork out and keeps your engine safe. Fuel system cleaning works because it removes the gunk that blocks fuel delivery. When your system is clean, injectors spray properly, the fuel pump works efficiently, and combustion happens the way it should. If you let deposits build up, fuel delivery gets restricted, combustion suffers, and you end up with rough running and poor performance. Let's talk about engine compression method that adds power back. That's trick number four. There are several products out there, like Restore Engine Restorer, Wrist Loan Compression Repair, and Visco Plus for oil that can help bring back lost compression without a full rebuild. Restore uses a special formula with copper, silver, and lead microspheres to fill microscopic scratches in the cylinder walls. I've seen engines gain compression as much as 40 PSI after using it, and sometimes it even stops oil burning and valve noise. But it's not magic. These products work best on engines that aren't totally worn out. They're not for every situation, especially not for engines with variable valve timing, where sludge can block the solenoids. Other products like AutoRx and Lucas Oil are also popular, and Seafoam has shown good results for both fuel and oil systems. But don't get misled by expensive services that promise the world and deliver little. You've probably heard that any compression additive will magically restore your engine. The truth is, these products work for some engines, but not for every situation. It's about knowing what your engine actually needs. Switching to synthetic oil is generally safe, even for engines that have been running on conventional oil for years. Modern engines are designed to handle synthetic oils, and the old myth that making the switch causes leaks just doesn't hold up. Synthetic oil provides better lubrication, especially in extreme conditions. High mileage synthetic oils also contain additives that help maintain and rejuvenate engine seals. This can actually reduce leaks, which is a common problem in older vehicles. These oils include detergents to keep the engine clean, viscosity improvers to handle stress, and dispersants to manage dirt and contaminants. If you live in a cold climate, synthetic oil flows better and protects your engine during cold starts. Many drivers notice improved performance, better fuel efficiency, and sometimes even a complete stop to oil leaks after switching to a quality synthetic. It's important to mention that if your engine already has worn seals, you might notice new leaks after switching to synthetic oil. This usually just means the synthetic oil is revealing problems that were hidden by thicker conventional oil. For high mileage engines, many experienced mechanics recommend using higher viscosity oils like 10W40 or 20W50 to handle the increased clearances between engine parts that come with age and wear. After switching to synthetic oil, it's smart to do your first oil change a little early, around 3,000 to 5,000 miles. This helps remove old sludge and any loosened deposits. After that, you can extend your oil change intervals, sometimes up to 10,000 or even 16,000 miles with a top quality synthetic. But here's where you need to be careful. Engine flushes can help remove sludge, but they can also create problems if your engine is already in rough shape. Sometimes a flush will dislodge debris and clog oil passages or reveal leaks that were hidden by sludge. For really deep cleaning, hot tanking at a machine shop is a thorough option. Some old school mechanics even use kerosene as a flushing agent, but that's risky and should only be done with extreme caution. Now, trick number two is all about carbon removal. Carbon buildup is especially tough on direct injection engines. Cars like the 2017 WRX or Audi R8 V10 can get thick carbon deposits on the intake valves because fuel never washes over them like it does in older engines. Direct injection sprays fuel straight into the combustion chamber, so intake valves miss out on that natural cleaning effect. This buildup leads to reduced power, misfires, rough idle, and poor oil circulation. Walnut blasting is the gold standard for carbon cleaning, especially on direct injection engines. It uses finely crushed walnut shells to scrub carbon off the valves and intake without damaging parts. It's reliable, 
thorough and safe for delicate engine components. Most shops charge between $400 and $600 for walnut blasting, but do-it-yourself kits are available for less if you have the right tools. The method is environmentally friendly because walnut shells are non-toxic and biodegradable compared to harsh chemical cleaners. It works across various vehicle types and reduces stress on engine components, preventing misfires and extending the lifespan of critical parts like the EGR system and diesel particulate filters. If you try chemical alternatives, be cautious. Most chemical cleaners only work on soft carbon deposits and can sometimes do more harm than good. A major concern is the risk of dislodging large chunks of carbon, which could enter the combustion chamber or sensitive components like catalytic converters and oxygen sensors, potentially causing engine wear or costly repairs. Some mechanics use water decarbonization method. They slowly add water to the intake while revving the engine to create steam that helps clean carbon. But this method is risky and needs to be done very carefully to avoid hydrolock. Carbon cleaning is typically recommended every 30,000 to 50,000 kilometers for direct injection engines. For regular engines, quality fuel system cleaners and good maintenance go a long way. Finally, trick number one is the engine test that reveals everything. This is how you turn basic maintenance into a comprehensive engine assessment and restoration system. Start by inspecting every surface in your engine bay. Look for leaks, rust, and damaged components. Take photos and label parts as you go. Pay attention to how your car drives and sounds because early intervention on small issues prevents big repairs. A common mistake is ignoring the check engine light or just clearing codes without understanding the cause. Your OBD2 system distinguishes between generic and manufacturer-specific codes. Knowing the difference helps you focus on root causes instead of chasing symptoms. Compression testing is the real truth teller. It measures your engine's ability to compress air and fuel in each cylinder. Low readings mean worn piston rings or valves, or carbon buildup. Sometimes adding oil to a low cylinder can help you figure out if it's rings or something else. If your compression readings are above 150 PSI in most cylinders, oil consumption is less than one quart per thousand miles, and you don't have internal coolant leaks, then systematic engine restoration will give you results that are almost as good as rebuilding for a fraction of the cost. Professional rebuilds can cost thousands, but this systematic engine restoration using these methods is usually under $500 and gives comparable results for most engines that aren't completely worn out. So how do you make your engine run like new again? Use the engine test that reveals everything. Combine visual inspection, OBD2 scanning, and compression testing to know exactly what's wrong and whether restoration or rebuilding makes sense. Remove carbon with walnut blasting for direct injection engines, or use quality fuel system cleaners for port injection engines. This restores proper airflow and combustion. Switch to high-quality synthetic oil that matches your engine's mileage. This gives better protection and can extend oil change intervals. Restore lost compression with products like Restore Engine Restorer for engines with minor ring wear but keep realistic expectations. Clean the fuel system with quality cleaners like Chevron Tecron every few months to keep fuel delivery and combustion quality high. Replace spark plugs, wires, and ignition components as your manufacturer recommends to keep combustion strong. Change coolant regularly and replace the thermostat to prevent overheating. Keep the air system clean with mass airflow sensor cleaning, throttle body cleaning, PCV valve replacement, and air filter maintenance. Drive smart, use proper warm-up techniques, try the Italian tune-up occasionally, and protect your car from harsh environments. Monitor your engine with OBD2 readings every week to catch problems before they get expensive. You've just learned how you can bring any tired engine back to life, but if you want your car to keep running strong for years, maybe even hit 300,000 miles or more, there are a few more secrets mechanics will never tell you. In my next video, I break down the maintenance tricks that literally make your car last decades longer. Click the video on screen now and give your car the fighting chance it deserves.